Hello once again, I'm Grant Abbott and you are watching Gabbett Media's Sculpt January. And we're on to number four today, which is uh, Rotten. Rotten was the uh, subject. It didn't go well. It was a bit frustrating. Had lots of problems. So I'll talk you through it. I'll show it to you anyway, because uh, I want to show you the ups and downs of Sculpt January and the ups and downs of my life. Uh, it was, it started off all right. I thought, yeah, yeah, this is fine. Uh, and um, I was noticing, I, I thought I'd download the um, most recent version of Blender 2.8 uh, and it seemed a bit more glitchy than other versions. So right from the start, I was having problems. They might, have, might just have been my fault. Uh, but it was uh, the it was being a bit laggy and non-responsive and uh, when I was cutting into my mesh it was cutting in in a really strange way it seemed to be the symmetry options because I wanted to just uh, quickly do it so uh, have symmetry on the X and Y so I'd only have to do one quarter of my apple to cut into it uh, so I got a sort of brush to cut in and you can see now actually there was a crash there and it sort of recovered and uh, so I was saving really regularly but um, that that problem was actually more uh, that I'd forgot to um, set the scale so setting the scale and rotation and things but there was another crash there after I set the scale and rotation so I couldn't work out what was going on and I think it may just be that daily build uh, it was not compatible with my system in some way so um, I managed to get it sort of roughly working just being very careful and not going to too many subdivisions and uh, just pausing every now and again in case it if I saw some lag I just sort of pause for a second and let it catch up with itself uh, but it was it was massively frustrating uh, so I appreciate where people are coming from uh, not wanting to go across to 2.8 at the moment uh, you can see there's uh, classic problems like this um, where you're sculpting on an object and it's kind of too thin and when you start sculpting, it's sort of sculpting the opposite side. Uh, you'll probably come across this loads of times. Uh, I certainly have in the past. Uh, and I often just use the inflate brush at that point to inflate the, the mesh out, and then it will stop sculpting on the reverse side or pinch into itself and things. Uh, you sort of get used to these things after you've used the tools for a while. Um, so there's probably people out there who uh, know my pain at the moment. Uh, but it was being really, really glitchy like that um, all the way through this sculpt. Uh, I, I was fairly happy with the sculpt uh, as I was going through, but then when I got to the really detailed level, and I think that's where my skill level is lacking in that sort of detail. I said it the other day, didn't I, uh, about uh, the torso lacking something. Uh, and uh, in, in a couple of hours, it's difficult to get to the real detail level because that seems to take absolutely ages because um, in a shape you've got so much area to cover uh, hence why people use brushes for the detail generally speaking uh, whereas I was trying to go through and uh, do the whole mesh in this fine detail and uh, then when I'd zoom out I think that didn't quite work and uh, it was a good study and a good experience for me but I didn't do well with it uh, so very frustrating I didn't do any of my uh, set up things like I usually do, there's no sort of character sculpt. It's quite a nice and easy one in a sense of not much thought has to go into it. I've got lots of reference images so I spent time gathering those together. Uh, but it, it is nice to just sit there and sculpt away. Uh, it's just nicer when it works. Uh, you can kind of see it, it looks like an apple. But the other massive problem I had was Eevee. Eevee was really not working for me. So um, the great thing about Eevee is that you get a live sort of preview. Uh, but I couldn't do that. I, it just went white all the time. Uh, so I'd have to actually render it all the time. The renders only took about four seconds, but when you're making minor adjustments and then you have to uh, press render and then another minor adjustment and press render, it just takes too long and it gets very sort of frustrating. Also, I couldn't get the subsurface scattering to work properly. I ticked it into the, in the sort of rendering uh, part <laughs> on the right hand side. Um, and uh, then my nodes, I was just touching them across slightly and then suddenly there'd be loads of subsurface scattering and then touch it the other way left and uh, there'd be none. Uh, and you, I couldn't find this sort of medium point. And I was using color ramps and plugging things into other things. And I, I kind of gave up in the end because it's just taking too long and I, uh, I can't really spend too much time on these things. Otherwise I will uh, kill myself. Uh, I, I've learnt my lesson with the first two taking over five hours 
uh, that I know two hours is a good time limit because it takes me about another uh, hour or so to do a video and put it on Sketchfab and all that sort of other stuff. Uh, so I don't want to um, not be able to do those things or be able to chat to people on social media as well uh, just because I'm busy sculpting. Uh, so there's a happy balance to be found. I really am rambling in this video, sorry, uh, to be uh, such a rambler. Uh, you can understand how my students feel now though. Uh, me just standing at the front trying to teach but actually just rambling like this like I am right now uh, anyway it's been that sort of day uh, back to the sculpt uh, so uh, I suppose I ought to say there's things like links in the description for uh, the tablet the graphic tablets I use lots of people uh, ask me and um, generally other videos not these ones but they ask me are you using a tablet um, I think this things this sort of thing's so hard with a mouse but some people manage to do it uh, and I've seen some very good sculpts from people uh, with just a mouse, uh, but it is extremely hard. And I use a, a, a Wacom um, Mobile Studio Pro, and I plug that into my machine and uh, use it like a Cintiq, uh, and that's very, very helpful. I'm sure that speeds up my workflow a lot. Uh, so links in the description for all those things. Uh, I'm trying to be sort of more, uh, I've got affiliated links, so I try and push and promote those. Uh, not that uh, you should uh, just click on the link and buy things, you should always research it. Uh, so they are there just uh, to try and help me get some income, but uh, I'm really not that worried if people click on them or not. Anyway, back to the sculpt. Uh, uh, this is where I start trying to do some detail, and you can see it's just not looking like an apple core. Uh, the, the top and the bottom sort of look okay, uh, but for some reason I just couldn't get the shapes right. I was looking at all the reference images and thinking, uh, well, this it does look like this. Uh, but my sculpt doesn't look like this. Uh, that didn't make sense. But it, <laughs> uh, when I'm drawing it out, it sort of made sense to me, but it didn't look right, uh, and I couldn't understand it. I thought maybe if I put some pips in, uh, that will sort it all out. So I put some pips in, and it didn't look any better. Uh, it, 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 it's working okay, but it just hasn't got that sort of natural feel. It looks very forced. Um, so yeah, uh, a real struggle, this one, a real struggle. Anyway. Uh, I feel like I'm being really boring actually. So it's a bad sculpt and a bad commentary. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, hopefully this will encourage you that uh, uh, if you're having a bad day or struggling through uh, Sculpt January or, or anything uh, that you can watch this and maybe laugh at me or maybe commiserate and understand and know that other people are going through it too uh, and perhaps that's what we can or the anybody out there watching this, still watching this unbelievably, uh, might be thinking, uh, oh yes, I can relate or, or not, or laugh, you know, like I say. Uh, I thought if I tidy up this stalk, that's where it's going wrong. Uh, and the stalk looks so right, actually, it's probably the only bit that looks okay. It's doing all these dents in it and uh, crevices, and uh, thinking this is definitely going to work. And the more I worked on it, the less it seemed to work. Uh, and I thought, I really don't want to paint uh, anything. Uh, because that can be massively time consuming as well. But then I started thinking, I think I need to paint this because it looks so bad. I need to tidy it up somehow. Something needs to save it. And often that happens actually. The more you work on a sculpt, you just sort of, it slowly emerges and you think, ah, oh, thank goodness, I've, I've got past that stage where it looks absolutely awful and horrendous and it looks okay now. But this one never got to that stage. Uh, so in a minute, I paint it and I paint it quite badly, unfortunately. Uh, because I'm rushing and then uh, that's where I had the problems because I, when I finished painting I thought that looks okay uh, and I was sort of rendering in cycles at that point it seemed although I was switching between cycles and Eevee because Eevee wasn't working then cycles wouldn't pick up the lights I was using and then that stopped working and then it said uh, my graphics card uh, was doing something uh, there was an error message and it was doing something wrong uh, so I had to sort of close down back in and it started working kind of, um, but yeah, so definitely something not comfy. That's it's uh, we depend on the software so much, don't we? And if there's anything slightly wrong, it can really mess up your whole workflow. I'm not blaming the software now; it's Blender's fault. Blender's fault, definitely. Uh, nothing to do with my rubbish sculpting. Uh, I was sort of counting on Blender to save me somehow. By uh, Eevee would just sun suddenly magically render it, and it would look amazing, uh, but it didn't happen. Uh, I do think there's a, that's a limitation of my own, is uh, not knowing uh, the software well enough. I don't know Eevee well enough to get good results yet, and I'm struggling with it a bit. 
um, and I'm more comfortable with the cycles. I was tempted to take this back to 2.79 uh, and work on it in there. I thought I'd leave some of my uh, node uh, messing around in and texture painting in. The texture painting was being a pain as well. Um, it kept changing my texture. So I'd start painting on what I thought was my apple color uh, and it would start painting on the normals. Uh, and it was very confusing as to why it was jumping um, between the two um, yeah, maps or color textures. Uh, it, that's, that is one thing I'm finding a bit tricky with 2.8 actually. Um, that uh, you go across the texture workspace which looks really nice especially if you're new to it you you can see uh, oh I'm uh, I'm creating a new texture and then I'm painting on that texture that looks great but if you want to set up your textures in the shader editor beforehand uh, let's say you're baking out normal maps and things like that um, it doesn't seem to sort of pick them up straight away and it seems a bit um, glitchy uh, when you haven't created them in the texture workspace, the texture painting workspace. Anyway, you can see me painting here and in fact looking back uh, that uh, colour for the uh, core or the apple flesh is not a very good colour so that's probably one of the reasons why it doesn't look very good. It's funny isn't it when you plug these textures into the principal shader um, it, it just completely changes uh, the way it reacts to the light obviously and uh, it looks totally different. And that's why I was really excited about Eevee uh, being able to texture paint and getting a live update um, and you can sort of paint in layers, although that's a bit tricky to set up, but it just wasn't happening. Uh, so I had to uh, do the old sort of paint on the, um, the texture without having that sort of update. Uh, and then when you plug it into the principal shader, it goes all over the place. Anyway, there is my final apple and you can see the problems I was having. It doesn't look great. It looks okay. Um, <clears throat> but uh, needs a bit of work. I had to do a slight jump cut there because I'd forgotten to put something in uh, which is everybody's uh, work from the Discord server. Uh, well done for those people who are joining in and uh, I'm showing some of your work here. Uh, some fantastic torsos, uh, so really well done. Uh, Mr. M there, man who with a chest that is a chest, oh, very nice. Uh, ORVB, excellent job there, really nice uh, torso. Uh, fantastic. Um, I did say torso last time, but it was actually chest was the title. But I sort of, in my brain, I, I went to torso. And uh, Giru, an excellent job there as well. Uh, some really nice work actually, lovely to see. And Victor Wachange, uh, it went a bit quick that did, but uh, some nice work there. I think uh, my favourite again is ORBB, who's uh, done a very nice job. Giru as well, uh, fantastic work. Uh, haven't seen any of your stuff before so that's uh, thanks for joining us and uh, well done so uh, really well done to everybody on the discord server um, and do get along there and chat to me I, I'm trying to respond to as much as I can do um, at grant if you want to specifically talk to me and then I'll get back to you okay uh, so uh, thanks for watching and hopefully you'll join me next time even though this one went slightly slightly wrong slightly bad <laughs> anyway see you next time